Okay, so now we've got the basic ideas of emission spectra. What we can do is we can look at that specific example, the mercury vapor lump. And um, we're going to look at the emission spectrum of a mercury vapor, and then we're going to try and see how that can be used to produce visible light. So here's our energy diagram again. Remember these are the different shells. Here's our ground state, minus 10.4. We've gone into electron volts now, which sometimes they'll give to you. Um, here's the emission lines that you get from this. Uh, first little job here, so if we got it last lesson, is to work out the transition that corresponds to 141 nanometer emission line. How are we going to do that? Well, first thing we need to do is to work out what energy that represents in terms of the photon. So what we do to do that is to work out, first of all, the frequency, C over lambda. So F equals the C, the speed of light, divided by the wavelength, lambda. This gives us a frequency. Second step is to turn that into an energy. So we just do E equals HF to make that into an energy. And then finally we need to turn that into um, from joules into electron volts by dividing by our conversion factor. And this tells us the energy of that photon is 8.8 .8 electron volts. So then we need to look at these different energy levels and we need to see which transition here is going to give us a difference of 8.8. .8. Well, it's fairly obvious that it's got to be something falling down into N equals 1 to get an 8.8 .8 difference if you do the maths you can work out that that difference is falling from 1.6 down to 10.4. That's a difference of 8.8. .8. So the energy change we're looking at there for an emission line is from n equals 4 to n equals 1. Remember, there would also be an absorption line when it goes from n equals 1 to n equals 4 at the same wavelength. Okay, what you might notice here is that all of these lines, apart from the bottom one, all of those in the ultraviolet are less than 400 nanometers. Okay, so all of these are ultraviolet lines, okay, which clearly isn't going to be much use for a light. So what we need to understand in a minute is to see how we're going to convert those. But first of all, we'll just have a look at this little animation, just to hopefully make that a little bit clearer. So here's our mercury uh, vapor. This is just one atom, so this is about as simple as vapor as you can get, just one atom in the middle. This is how this is produced. So over here we've got a cathode. This is going to produce electrons. They're going to be accelerated towards the anode over here. On their way down through the tube, the electrons are going to combine, uh, going to collide. So we've got a bombarding electron coming down here, colliding with the orbital electron in here. At the moment, this orbital electron is in the ground state. But if I fire the electron at it, okay, it accelerates down the tube. It knocks it into an excited state. So it's knocked it into the... Um, n equals 4, the fourth shell here, okay? Hopefully it hasn't gone back down again, so I'll try another one. So if I fire that electron, that's knocked it back up a little bit higher. Okay, see so it went up to there, and it fell back down again. Let me just try this again. Okay, try that bit again. So we fire the electron, it collides with it, it knocks it into an excited state, and then it might fall back and release the photon. So going over there was the photon. Okay, these have been excited a couple of times. If I just put this on continuously, firing it, so it keeps knocking the electron up into these excited states and they fall down, and the energy gaps between these states correspond to particular photons. Here's our spectrum of photons building up. Okay, you see we've got a lot of photons over here at less than 400 nanometers. These are all ultraviolet, so this is not visible light. We also get some photons in the visible spectrum and a few down here in the infrared. Okay, obviously in a real mercury vapor lump, you haven't just got one atom in there. You've got lots of atoms, so if we put multiple atoms in there, okay, we've got lots of electrons firing down, exciting lots of um, atoms. Every time the atom gets excited, it falls down again and releases all these different photons. If we put our spectrometer back on, then we'll see we're building up lots and lots of those photons that are in the ultraviolet up here, as well as some visible photons down here. Clearly that's going to cause us some problems which we have to sort out. So the way it's sorted out is what we do is we take the ultraviolet photons and we make them hit a coating on the outside of the lamp. So if you've ever seen those kind of lights in... Uh, nightclubs and discos which have which just seem to give off um, a sort of purple glow those are mostly given mostly given off ultraviolet radiation okay well the only difference between those and the ones that are in the room you sat in is the coating on the inside of the tube so there's a kind of white powder on the inside of the tube what that powder does is it absorbs the ultraviolet photon and then re-radiates a photon that's in the visible part of the spectrum 
Okay, sometimes that does have an effect that the fluorescent lights does tend to be a little bit different to a, a what's called an incandescent bulb, a filament bulb, that produces a full spectrum of radiation, whereas this um, fluorescent lamps produce more light towards the shorter end of the spectrum. So here's my slightly less posh animation to show that. So here's our mercury vapor atoms. We fire an electron in from the left hand end here. It excites that one, excites that one, excites that one. Those all produced visible photons. If you just go back again, so sorry, these are ultraviolet photons, but it hits the white coating here and they're turned into visible photons. Okay, you have to have a low enough pressure that the electron's got time to accelerate. So just one more time, see the electron is accelerating between each collision. It's got to be going fast enough to excite those electrons, those orbital electrons, up in the first place. What you need to be able to do most crucially here is just to uh, just to um, explain the steps of production of visible light in a fluorescent tube. So what we get is electrons emitted from one end of the tube. They're accelerated down the tube. They collide with orbital electrons, which excite them to a higher energy level. The orbital electron then uh, relaxes. We're using D excites here. So that should say D excites really to a lower energy level and releases an ultraviolet photon. The ultraviolet photon is absorbed by the fluorescent layer, the layer that's on the inside of the tube, and then that light is then re-emitted as a visible photon.